Hey everybody, Rob John Webb here for Waxadisc. I want to show you and I'll walk you through it just how easy it is to um, create a track with very little um, and make it, you know, uh, uh, sounding big and busy and so forth. Um, and all it requires is, a, a, you know, a couple of loops um, and, uh, you know, your drums and your percussion, etc. So um, the track is a old loop that I've got from an old record, an old Philly record, um, and it goes like this. on it goes so basically it's just a couple of loops but what I've done here is if you can see there are only seven tracks in the whole track you know sometimes I think what I'm trying to get out here for you guys here is if you're gonna make a disco house track um, that's sample based try to strip it down a bit and try not to have so many layers of stuff 10 15 20 layers 30 layers in some cases you don't need to do that if you look at some of the greatest disco house records Stardust Two loops and a vocal, um, a drum and a loop and a vocal, should I say. Um, Pete Heller, Big Love, a loop and a, and a beat, and that's it. Um, you know, those sort of records, the Bucketheads, Bomb, for example, just the loop and the beat, you know. Um, they're simple and they're so effective. Um, and if you can get a decent enough loop from somewhere, then that's all you need. So I'm going to walk you through it now and we're going to go for it. So basically all I've done is I've used the 90s kick from within Ableton. So if you go to drums type kick 90 and then in there you've got these kicks look and I've used that one there the first one kick 90 is one and it's a really good solid kick and it goes like this look. And it's got a real pounding sort of bottom end to it and all I've done with that is I've used a bit of EQ there look but if we go over to session view you can see I've got it all down here I always do my mix downs at about you know try and get the instruments down beneath minus six so that on the master channel it stays at minus six so that the mastering can be done so there's a, another tip for you but with the kick i try I, sometimes i have them up at zero but sometimes um in recent times i've started to reduce the levels of everything so everything comes lower in the mix and it gets pumped up through the mastering but however this kick the 90s kick i've used the mju um clang helm uh compressor on this and this is a really nice compressor and it takes it up to zero anyway there look but it's not it's not distorting it's not clipping um, and I just put a little bit of compression on it at about six there look and just push it up to about six on the makeup and it's just thumping if I take if I take it off that's without it just gives it that extra beef that you want and obviously with the right EQ that's without so I wanted that thuddy sort of vibe to it so that's you know that's one good um, compressor to use so you want to get that it's free by the way you can just get it from anywhere the clang helm mju compressor so i used that there and then i wanted to you know obviously with regards to the loops that i've got um the loops here let me just solo them we start off with disco house start it off from the very off filter it in with the kick so if you listen to big love by pete heller as a reference just he does that straight away straight in like that there it's instantly there so if we take the auto filter and you can see that the, the ascent of the the line and it builds then the claps you just loop in the very first part of the loop so the loop that I've got there is just that it's tiny just keeps repeating and then here the full loop comes in it is so the, in, the the important thing is to do is to start the loop straight in from the off and build it up and snip it in half if you've got a four bar loop snip it in half and just loop it and put the kicks over and it's so effective and then your hi-hats 
So that, you know, once you've got those loop, once you've got your loop that you want, just develop, cutting the loop up shorter and build it and spread it out as you get further up. And as you start to build it up, filter up as well. And then full frequency by the time it's ready to drop. But when it's ready to drop, what you need to do is uh, get to the point where you've got 64 beats to or so. And then you drop the kicks out, get rid of the kicks like that. And then we just have the hi-hat and the claps. And then we drop everything out for one tiny section so that the loop can come in full flow. That is So that's, you know, that's the best way to approach that. Filter it up nice and smoothly, nice and slowly, then kick it in, drop everything out, all your drums, and just have the loop for a split second, then throw it all in. So going back to the drum sounds, all I did was I got a, um, if you notice, there's no MIDI on this either. So just all WAV files, seven of them in total. So I've got a little hi-hat there, a bit of reverb on. Just enough to tie it over and just give it a bit of spaciness. Um, and then I've got this little loop here, which is a percussive loop. And it's just like a snare, like a snare clap. And then I got on top of that um, a percussion loop here, which is more Congo, Congo, bongo. Sort. There you go. Again, just a small loop. In fact, they're MIDI. To be honest, I didn't realise that they were MIDI. So um, if we go into the percussion spirit kit, it's the Congos there. Look, so it'll be wherever they are. If we get on my, I've just made a tiny pattern. That's all I've done. I didn't realize that there were um, MIDI. I've forgotten. But look, if you look in that, two congas, simple. So the conga low says, that's it. So simple, so simple. Put some delay on that. Okay. So you've got a delay and a reverb on it. Put it on with your beat. And then back in. So put it all together. And that's it. That's all you need. One, two, three, four, five drum elements. And then the crash on top of that as well. So six drum elements in the loop. And that's it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all you want to do there is when you bring the track after it's been um, in full loop, for example, for this whole section, you drop out the kicks and then you enter the percussion look. So if we look here, we've got this section here. So for 30, 64 beats, we get to here, drop out the kick, Congo's enter. But there the loop changes with the string bit. then it comes back again. So that's that's probably one way of doing it. So you can do that, um, build it up with your main loop, then change the loop. And I'm going to show you something about the loops in a minute, um, which will give you a bit more um, inspiration and a bit more encouragement. Now, um, obviously with the crashers, I've just got a simple crash. The crash I use, I'm using it all the time, or that set selection of crashers from within Ableton, is the Crash Acoustified. So um, I'm going to type that in there, and in the crashes, where are they are? There, there's a whole range of them, and they're more live sounding. You know, depending on what you do. Obviously, if you're using some, if you're making a track that's a track that's more electronic, then by all means use the 909. But generally, these acoustified crashes are ideal for disco and edits and that sort of thing. And uh, they just have a li lot more, you know, liveness to them, and a lot more, you know, um, sort of reverb. Uh, on them. And they're just smoother, a lot smoother. So I use those, I always reverse the crash. So it gives off that, you know, that kind of transition that you want. Um, anyway, so uh, the percussions dealt with, the claps, they're just from uh, a loop pack from somewhere. They, a normal hand clap, proper like group hand clap to give it that live feel. Reverb on. Um, and regarding the loops, so let's go back to the loops. If we if we discuss what I said earlier about the loops, 
So these loops, this track, right, goes like this. So if I do this. This is the rest of the track. That's the stuff I never used. Can you hear in the background, there's a vocal, very faint. So what I've done, I'm gonna undo that. What I've done is I've put this through a vocal extraction um, program online we called lala.ai. Um, and basically what that is, is obviously if you're not aware of it, it's, it's very common now, but it's basically a vocal removal thing. You can do instrument ones as well, but all I've done is taken the vocal out of this um, and because the loop that I wanted had a vocal over it and it was a bit of a, I couldn't quite get the loop off the instrumental bit. So if you ever want to get a small loop without any artifacts on top ruining it, but there's a vocal you want rid of, then use one of the vocal extraction things for any of your samples and try and create an instrumental of the loop that you want to sample, should there not be one. And the, in this case, there wasn't. So I did that and then I created that small loop. So in there, on there, there was a vocal, but it's been removed now. So um, that's that little trick there. So yeah, lala.ai, there's quite a few of them out there. You can do it yourself, but it's best to just to pay a few dollars and buy a load of credits for like $10. I think you get so many, like a minute, an hour's worth or something. So you could put five or six, seven, eight tracks through and have the vocals removed. So that's what I did with that one. That's that loop track. This wouldn't be possible without that. So. And the track just repeats and loops itself. It goes round and round. And then drops here to the filter. So at this point here is I wanted to have a different variation by using the same loops. So you drop the filter down right down so that it just plays just kick and a crash and a little bit of congos come back in and the loop is filtered like a bass sub until it kicks back in again like this. And then the kick goes, reverse crash, congo, conga. And then the loop again. So as you can see, it's very simple, very straightforward. And that's what I want you to be able to kind of learn to adapt to. Don't feel that you have to overproduce tracks um, when, you're, when you're making loop-based stuff. Just sometimes the loop is enough, you know. Um, and, and if you can add a baseline onto it, sometimes it requires a baseline, whereas in this case, I didn't need to. I tried, but I didn't need to. Um, but do try, you know, don't, don't, don't rule out anything. But as I say, sometimes a loop and a handful of drums is all you need for a good, solid track. I'm not saying this is perfectly solid, but it does the job. Um, you know, and it, and, it, and it got into the top 100 at track source. So, you know, we did okay. Um, and then what you do at the end is we'll have the filters going down. <laughs> Like this. So we're turning it around now, taking it away. And it comes back up one more time. And here goes. Bob. And out again. And it fades out and fades out and then goes back down. Like so. Drop the kicks out. One, two, three, four. Bang. And that's always a good way to end your tracks when you're doing loop-based stuff, is to filter it down, as you can see the frequency is going down, drop the kicks out for the last four of the loop. So one, two, three, four, then reverse crash, and then a crash, and then just your drums as your outro so your DJ can mix it into the next record. And there you go, that's it. That's uh, this week's tutorial on how to be Effective with just one loop and a handful of drums. Don't overproduce your tracks and make everything, you know, as effective as you would if you had a full track with 20 or 30 different channels. So that's it, really. Any questions, anything you want to ask, just contact me and I respond within 24 hours, as you know. But yeah, go off now and do uh, a loop based track with just a kick, a hi hat, a percussion, congos, and a crash. See how you get on with it. Filter it, keep the filters up, down, keep them simple. Two loops at the most, three loops at the maximum. You know, see how you get on. Thank you and see you soon.